Welcome to the second part of Sailing to Fiji Alone. This is Raoul Island, halfway on the way up to Fiji. The weather was bad and I had thought about stopping here. It had been blowing from the north, which of course was stopping me going north. And it wasn't just a bit of wind, it was quite a lot of wind. It was giving me a hard time. I nearly decided to pull into Raoul Island and claim refuge, but then things picked up a little bit. And then they got bad again. getting out of hand so I tried turning it downwind bring the wind behind us a little bit no way it nearly ripped turby off the top there that was incredible comes more across the waves here but the wind is more or less slightly aft of the beam so uh, it's more behind the boat than in front it takes the power out of everything Old Turby up there, he's about to come off the frame. I'm about to lose that solar panel over there. Uh, this is wrecking my boat. It was the nature of this trip that it was hard and then all of a sudden things were just changing. If you had a little bit of hope for a, a, just a day or so before going bad again, then this happened. Uh, it was in the middle of the night. I saw this uh, just on the horizon. The, the weather had calmed down. At first couldn't figure out what it was. Then of course realized it was the moon. It was shining down from up above through the clouds where it was dark and then coming out of a hole at the bottom of the clouds, making this wonderful sort of pattern on the water. Had me memorized for quite a while. No wind, so I'm under power at the moment. Trying to get myself further north where there is wind. There's something up there, but is it the right wind? Take any opportunity to do the laundry. Why not? A few hours later, engine off and becalmed. I know there's another uh, storm front coming through, so just enjoying the quiet. I've got about another two or three hours and then the wind is due to come, so I'm in no hurry. It's the end of the day. It's been a restful day today. Um, got a few things done, but just resting really. It was nice not to have the bad weather. Uh, motored for five hours and I've stopped here uh, for a few hours resting, doing a few jobs on the boat. Got the sails up ready because the weather is due to come in again and we're due for another big blow. I can see some waves in the distance way over there. Uh, the wind is going to come again in the wrong direction, but we're going to make the best of it. I'm well reefed down for the night. But before I settle down for the night, got a solemn duty to perform. Uh, one of the crew members has passed away. It's very sad. He, he did a great job uh, eating all the little gnats and the mosquitoes and things that, on the boat here. Um, Spidey was doing a great job, uh, him and his mates. Um, and now I'm at sea, there are no bugs on the boat, so there's nothing for them to eat, so they're all starving to death. <laughs> I tried feeding him some potato and then some licorice all sorts, but nothing worked. And Spidey has left us. Uh, he's now um, passed, deceased, is an ex-spider. So I'm going to have to commit his soul to the deep. Um, so uh, a solemn moment indeed.
very sad moment. There you go, Spidey. Rest in peace, mate. I made you a little shawl look. Uh, he's a fairly big spider. Spiders go around here. The difference between a New Zealand spider, because that's where he's probably from, and uh, an Australian one is the Australian ones can kill you. Uh, these guys can't. Spidey, safe journey. Awesome. <laughs> Now it's beer o'clock, I think. Just one beer a night. I allow myself that one. Uh, let's see. Uh, having this now and then, when I find some food, and the wind's picking up, so uh, hopefully it's it's going to be a restful night. But I believe it 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 gets up to about 15 odd knots or more, uh, odd knots, at uh, about four o'clock in the morning. So um, hence the reef down sails. In fact, it's picking up as we speak. And hence, only one one beer. Yeah. Okay, we'll see you guys in the morning. All being well. Once again, it goes from good to bad. That to green teardrop is me. And all that red nasty stuff with the arrows pointing means the wind's coming down from the north. Once again, I'm in for a kicking. Fiji is over there, uh, Tonga is there, and Tahiti is over there. Um, <laughs> I should be going up there, but that that is into the wind, it's into the waves, uh, they're still too high, and like you can't sail into the wind. There's a big mess everywhere. Um, as you would imagine, I can't stop and clean anything or tidy up. Cupboards have burst. There's all kinds of stuff going on down there. Today's the 16th day. Um, according to the schedule, I should be arriving in Fiji, but uh, that's not happening because you can imagine. I, I'm barely halfway there. I still have an excess of 600 miles to do more like 700 I think. I have literally not made any miles towards Fiji now for nearly a week. This wind is just unrelenting, it won't stop. It's beginning to get to me, I gotta say. And the, the, uh, the promise of a change keeps coming and going. I keep thinking, oh, tomorrow it looks like it's gonna change. And then the next forecast I get on the satellite system is different and it's, it doesn't happen. This unrelenting 15 to 20 knot winds coming from the north with pretty much average four to five meter swells. So I can't go north and that's where I need to be. It's supposed to change in about an hour or two in that the wind, the wind is going to move around and I've, I've, the door will open for me to go north. But everything is wet. I got hit so hard by waves last night and water was coming in, came on the bed. I can't cook anything properly, I'm just living out of cans. My spirits are a bit low, I gotta say. I'm, health, I'm, I'm still healthy, I'm still getting enough nourishment uh, and liquids and food down in my neck, the basic stuff that uh, keep me going. I'm literally trapped in the Tasman, I can't get out. I've had more waves come over. 
in seven or eight years of cruising this boat, I have, well, seven years I guess, I've, I've only ever had waves come over and into the cockpit about five times. I, I must have had it happen 20, 30 times on this trip alone. Not huge waves, most of them, although some of them have been. Most of it's just spray, but enough to fill the bottom of the cockpit. It just shows you. This is a horrible, horrible place. Don't ever come to the Tasman Sea in a boat. It is a horrible place. It can kill and has killed people, but it is just a horrible place to be. Every time the nose of the boat went down in one of the swells, I got a nasty banging sound uh, coming from the front. I kind of worked out what it was, but I checked everything, went out on deck uh, to have a look-see, and it was, as I thought, the anchor. Every time the water hits the bottom of the anchor, it bangs on the deck. I knew it was doing that. I've gone into the wind. So, we need to fix this. Oh, come on. There's a rubber mat, rubber mat, rubber mat, rubber mat, rubber mat. One down there somewhere. Let's get that one out. <laughs> it actually feels quite warm that water, I've got to say. <laughs> we're in Fiji yet? No, we're not. I think we've got hundreds of miles to go, yeah, boy. Right, this is a bit of a bad job. Here we go, watch this. Uh, not quite. It's the big ones that make it bang. Make a note here, centre safety lines on the boat. Good old squeaky. For the life of me, I cannot understand why people still put safety lines down the side of boats. It's a stupid idea, you can fall off the boat. Safety line down the middle of the boat, you can't fall off. And on a day like this, that is a good thing. Oh, peace at last, peace at last. Going downwind. The wind is at last behind us, it's changed and is pushing us north. All is good. Up there in front of us for a change is actually Fiji somewhere. A long way from here, but nevertheless, we're on the correct course. Time to clean up all the mess. Everything is just soaking wet. Doing some washing up and it's laundry day. Again. What a difference the day makes. All of a sudden, the wind is behind us today. It's driving us directly to Fiji. We're surfing on the waves, but this time in glorious sunshine on a glassy blue sea. Made a makeshift little uh, tent system here for the, the companionway with the wind behind us. We're getting a bit of spray coming in for the boat, so uh, that'll stop that for a minute. Inside here, I've moved a few of the things that are drying because they were getting spray on them. Had a good clean up down here. There was a heck of a mess um, from the last uh, few days of bad weather. But uh, we're pretty much ship shape now. Here's the latest Predict Wind uh, satellite download on the weather. You can see it's all blowing up. That's Fiji there. We're actually going to the, the island that's just next to it there. And we're there. Um, as you can see, as time goes on, 
it uh, it gets a few red bits going in there um that's going to happen tonight probably just going to let the next minute or so run almost completely unedited uh without any fancy bits to give you an idea what it's like to be on a boat in a big blow in the middle of nowhere by yourself The last two days have been really, really miserable. Really miserable. This horrible sea just won't go away. I'm cruising under no more than two square meters of foresail up on the front. I'm doing, I've been doing between two and five knots just with that and, and have been now for a day and a half. I'm about to change um, course and um, head on further north. I'm going a bit too far west at the moment. But that's because of the swell. I'm trying to just ride the swell. And when it catches the side of the boat, I mean, we really lean over. It's a big old mess down below. It smells. I'm dirty. I haven't washed. You can't. You, you can't barely make a coffee. It takes me an hour to make a cup of coffee nearly. Just to, to, well, to get out of bed and wake up anyway. Um, so, uh, and I didn't, I couldn't eat last night. It was just too, too rolly and dangerous to, to prepare hot food. So, um, and all the gimbal on the oven has broken just from the, the snatching up. Uh, they're whack bang, whack bang, whack bang. And uh, I, I thought it was going to, so I've had to wedge it in place. So that's a job to be done. Uh, on the bright side, I've cleaned up all the diesel spill in the boat. That's finally all cleaned up. Um, but it still smells of diesel there. It's body odor diesel and whatever else it's just stale clothing um it's horrible I, I can't open the boat up to air it because i'm getting water in the back and i i i've, I've made this plastic sheeting thing up uh, just yesterday to stop um uh, water coming down the companionway as it has done a few times it did this morning as well just a bit not much if you get a big wave in there whoa uh, one of the things about being on the boat is you need to whoa there's a biggie there you need to uh, make sure that uh, your living space is dry. You need that little space that you can go into and it's warm, cozy and safe while outside it's doing silly things. Uh, yeah, so uh, there we go. That's where we are, day 19. I'm overdue, but thanks to uh, the predict wind thing, I'm able to make little notes and, and put them online. I don't know if any of you guys might be following some of this stuff. And well, obviously, when I've done this video, I'll have done the trip. If I'm still, if I'm still alive, I'm probably in a bar at, in real time right now, having a pizza. I certainly hope so. I hope there's going to be a future. I didn't think so a couple of times over the last few nights. I gotta say, I was um, a little bit concerned. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe and press the notifications bell. That way you'll be notified when Sailing to Fiji Alone Part 3 comes up and you won't miss it. Also, many thanks to my patrons for being completely wonderful and supporting this channel. My real-time updates are on Facebook and on Instagram. This is the old Sea Dog. Thanks for watching. See you next time.